What's up guys, it's your boy Endymion, here with another Mass Effect Theory video. This time I want to talk about a theory about something I surprisingly don't see being talked about more on the internet. The concept of the beings of light, and how they connect to the overall structure of Mass Effect as a whole. This lore info stems from a sort of throwaway block of text hidden within the Codex. From the Codex summary of Clan Cory, a planet, reads, Clan Cory is famously claimed by the eccentric Volus billionaire Kumin Shoal. He claims that a vision of a higher being told him to seek on Klenkori the lost crypts of beings of light. These entities were supposedly created at the dawn of time to protect organic life from synthetic machine devils. Shoal has been excavating on Glencory's toxic surface for two decades at great expense. No government has valued the world enough to evict his small army of mercenaries. So you're probably wondering what this means for Mass Effect and if this concept will ever see its fruition. As I talked about before in my Ancient Race Returns video, there seems to be hidden pockets of lore sealed away on random planets in the Milky Way galaxy, like how the planet Aingana was fought over viciously by the Inusan and Entos Sally, all while the Reapers were bringing both races to their eventual extinction. So just like that, this planet of Klenkora apparently holds, according to Kumen Shoal, the lost crypts of beings of light. But what could these beings be? A new race? A new threat? Let's theorize a little. I think right out of the gate we can throw away the idea that these beings of light are anything religious like angels or whatnot, but instead fulfill a concept I will call the will of the universe. See, everything in the universe as we know exists and operates based on rules long established before we even existed. Gravity, dark energy, or the need for oxygen to breathe, to name a few. But the one rule that the entirety of the universe follows regardless is what I like to call the exchange. Everything that is given to you, say food or something of value, is taken from another source. Life itself can be seen in the same way with life being given to us all, and eventually as we give experiences and take what we need to live, we are eventually, ultimately, taken by the ultimate end of all things death itself. What I believe these beings of light represent could be two things. Firstly, they could represent an order of individuals each chosen by the universe itself to guide or usher in new life and opportunities. Somewhat similar to the ending of the film 2001 A Space Odyssey, where the astronaut Bowman at the end of the film ascends by the decree of the universe itself and is seemingly thrusted through vast distances of space and cosmic events until he eventually evolves into a sort of star child, or more accurately, a massively evolved being that now, due to the intervention of the universe itself or whatever reasons the universe had, made Bowman into a god of sorts or he was chosen to represent his species for some greater meaning. That could be a stretch, sure, but these beings of light in Mass Effect could each be a representative of different races chosen by the universe itself in order to preserve, in a sense, the history, DNA, and existence of that species. Sort of like how Reapers, as we know, each harbor the entire genetic data of an entire species within each of them, preserving that species and solving the conflict of organic versus synthetic according to the intelligence. A sort of almost anti-Reaper-esque way of preserving the existence and accomplishments of organic life. The other theory I have is what I more so believe these beings of light to be, and that, as I said earlier, they are the will of the universe. Physical apparitions given form by the universe of its cosmic will to see the events and decisions within the universe itself to be documented and influenced by guiding the organic species within the various galaxies that make reality into taking paths that'll lead to new and devastatingly unknown futures. Another example I could give is to think of the beings of light similar to that of the Watchers from the Marvel Universe. The Watchers, as their name suggests, are there to simply do just that, to watch history unfold and document it for some greater purpose. It could be that the Catalyst itself was a being of light, making itself known in the form of that little boy to Shepard so that Shepard could be guided to make the decisions at the end of Mass Effect 3. The beings of light could also be something close to the concept of fourth dimensional beings. Basically, we as humans exist within three-dimensional space. We can move around in whatever direction, look up, down, and travel on a dimensional grid that gives us freedom of movement. Whereas Super Mario back in the day would exist in a 2D dimensional space, which restricts Mario to run from left to right on a two-dimensional field of existence. The fourth dimension would be, in theory, a dimension outside of our dimension that could essentially allow whoever was in that dimension to influence or control our current third dimension. To put it in simpler terms, imagine that Commander Shepard and the Normandy crew as existing within a three-dimensional space, 
which they do, since the Mass Effect games allow you to move left, right, back, forward, and such, and each character exists with that freedom. Think of it then that if Shepard exists in a three-dimensional space, then we, the player, are technically fourth-dimensional beings to Commander Shepard within the game Mass Effect. Controlling the outcomes and dialogue choices, how to level up, or even who to romance, which in Shepard's confines of time and space, seems like free will, but in reality, everything Shepard does is dictated and influenced by us, the players. That's a lot to think about, I know, but putting it into the perspective of beings of light, it would be the same, but we are Shepard in this sense, and these beings exist in that theoretical fourth dimension, influencing and watching and documenting the lives of the Milky Way species to follow paths that, while allow some form of freedom of choice, would ultimately lead the players involved to an eventual endpoint that these beings, or the will of the universe, essentially would want to happen. Like whether Shepard is male or female, biotic or soldier, romancing Garrus, Liara, Tally, or whatever, all of these choices are in a sense an action of free will, but they will all ultimately lead Shepard to that inevitable conclusion where Shepard must make a choice with the Crucible. And you can think of the beings of light being these almost invisible strings guiding Shepard to make the decisions and forge the relationships necessary so that new things can be born and ultimately exist down the line, like Mass Effect Andromeda, or whatever the next Mass Effect game ends up being. It goes beyond religious ideology and instead gives the universe itself, the true ruler of all, not so much a god as humans would perceive it where religions believe God to be one person or something, but instead the concept of God and that is instead looked at as being the universe itself. The stars, the sun, the endless galaxies of unknown potential, even you in a sense are a part of that universe. And these beings exist to exact the will of the universe and make sure it all works according to the rules predated well before we even had true consciousness. The exchange rule, gravity, life and death, it all exists and is a part of these beings. So going back to the Volus billionaire on Klenkori, as documented in Mass Effect 3's Codex who had a vision and is searching for these vaults, maybe these vaults were created by a long forgotten species influenced by the beings of light for some purpose down the line. Maybe those vaults exist to shelter genetic data of those forgotten races, or maybe they are safe zones from the Reapers, who, because of this light beings being involved, are completely oblivious to the existence of these hidden vaults. Or maybe nothing is there at all. Maybe one day we'll know. It's also interesting because way back in 2012, when asked by a fan, Jessica Marazen, who used to work at Bioware, replied to a fan who asked about the Catalyst and the Star Child and all that, and she had this to say. Huh, so maybe there is more to this than it seems. Guess we'll know one day, right? Well, thanks for watching. I know this video kind of dived into some crazy topics, but hey, that's how I perceive things. So if you liked what you've seen, I have many more Mass Effect 3 videos on my channel. Let me know what you think of these light beings, and please, like, comment, and subscribe to help a new YouTuber out. I'm Endymion, this video was a lot of work, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna go buy some food now, your boy's hungry, my lower back hurts, it's all good, I'll see you next time.